It was a dark and stormy night when Keychain recorded another episode of Stone Shower. Welcome back, everybody. I have reorganized our inventory again, and I think we are ready to head out. We are going to try to squeeze two dungeons into this episode. So let's go to Fort Edward. That's where we were previous episode. So we are going to the Chapel of the Guiding Star, I suppose. Oh, that's the good dungeon. Yay. All right. That sounds great. Let's hope for some good loot. We gotta probably buy another smoked ham before we leave, just in case. Yeah, let's do that. Come here by the bartender. And head out. Now, we are only, what, level 4? So, we'll probably level in this dungeon level 5 for that boss. In that dungeon, oh well, I don't know which boss it's gonna be because there's different ones to choose from now. But I, uh, oh, did we do everything? No, 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 water, 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 and we need to check our backpack. We have lock picks, plenty. We have medical supplies, and we have repaired. Yes. All right, so we just gotta fill our water skin, and then we can go. Almost forgot. That would not have been good. Alright, let's try to make good time while we still have our vigorous buff here. We can probably get to the dungeon. Let's see, it's one north of the town and then all west. So we just gotta go west. Go west! And so, we arrive at the mill here. I uh, have something on my mind that we can discuss while we walk to, for, for the continuation of the series, I have decided that I can no longer put out two videos per day as I have been doing in the past half few months before my vacation thing. Uh, so it's going to be one video per day from now on, I think, at least for a while, and uh, that means since I still want to do some other series, that some days will not be Stone Shard. Probably like every other day could be Stone Shard and then something else on the off days. I haven't really decided that yet, but we are going to be slowing down the pace of content on my YouTube channel in general. Because I, uh, I overworked myself with YouTubing. Didn't think it was possible to overwork with gaming, but apparently it is a thing. Believe it or not. It's all good though. It feels good to be in Stone Shard right now, and I wanna get as much done as we can in this episode. Two dungeons. Hashtag two dungeons. We can do this. Run, Velmir. I feel like I have that nagging feeling again that I have forgotten something. Not sure what that would be. Probably to be careful, first of all, because I'm running forward here and we just spotted some wolves. We could run into death, basically, if I'm not careful here. As always, we are playing on permadeath for those that are not aware. It's always tricky. You don't want to just run blindly into the forest like I just did. This is probably what gets most people killed. Oh, oh look at that flea ward. They have really... There was a time where flea ward didn't spawn anywhere, and now they have changed that. So that there's plenty of flea to go around. Let's pick up some food items here. This dungeon does not contain a lot of food items. Although I'm not sure that's true actually. Uh, this one has crates and barrels in it and, and uh, crates and barrels almost always contain food. Sheath. These corpses outside as always. That's, that's a one-time thing. They don't respawn there, dude. Yeah, the sheath though is not that uh, valuable in any sense. The golden too, though, is quite nice. Oh, we should really loot lo these things on the way out of the dungeon. I'll put it back here. And dive on down. We got a fly Gareth with pain management, but I think we already had like two herbal extracts. In fact, we are doing pretty well on our basic supplies. Still don't have a ranged weapon because we have a cursed pitchfork that we are playing around with, and I didn't play this accurately. I should have gotten out the offensive tactic earlier here. It's fine. 
think that we can mobilize people at a distance. We take very little punishment in a fight, and that was not really true. He had a damage reflection, I think, so I did a lot of damage to myself here by just killing him. And that's always the problem with these guys, that you hurt yourself while fighting them. Let's do it again, though. Did not get immobilized that time. Okay, we stab him again. See, we're all ready. And he did it again. This has happens every episode now, where... What happened here? I'm, I'm, I know I do this all the time these days, but I'm gonna go back and analyze what just happened. Because it's something happened that wasn't supposed to happen. Look at that. We attacked with Impaling Dunt. When the attacks... He was at range 2 here, we attacked him, so he should not be able to counter-strike them, right? Then he reflects damage, he counter-attacked at range 2 against me here. Then I reflect damage because of my damage reflection. Then he attacks me, again, uh, again at range 2, like he moves forward and attacked after I stabbed him. And unless he has like an ability... He has some new abilities, but nothing that allows that kind of movement and attacking. So, something finicky is going on, and it's time for me to make a Discord post about this, I think. So I'll try to set my mind to do that out of this episode. In here we see, Willing Sacrifice. Each time the caster takes damage, the same amount of health is replenished for their allies within the caster's vision, and the active cooldowns are reduced by one. Huh. Alright. Yeah, and on death, then he gives blood oath to all adjacent. Adjacent only, okay. They have to be adjacent. Which, I, adjacency doesn't count diagonally, does it? Oh yeah, it does. Sure it does, yeah. What am I saying? But adjacent vampires and proselytes, not everyone in sight. I think it used to be everything in sight. Now it's only adjacent units that give... Where they get 25% uh, life drain and 50% healing efficiency, which I think that combos. And then uh, he, abilities, energy cost lowered as well. Alright, so he's been reworked too. Very cool. Murder him. Go back and meditate on the fact that we were just hurt in this fight where we weren't supposed to be. I need to really... Remember to go and make a post about this on the Discord after the fact. It's fine for now. We'll just keep playing and keep in mind that that is a thing. Not much I can do about it. This lady will shoot at me. I can step one forward. Oh, she's bringing friends. Oh, and I did get dazed. I thought I didn't get dazed. Alright, it's fine. We'll step back. Impale. Good. Uh, <clears throat> no bleeding given here, yeah, so there's no point in running away. Well, that's not true. Oh, he's gonna shoot. I still think I do way more damage at range than he does. So the skirmishing is fine. One more. Stab again. This time it managed to get into melee range here and... He's about to die, surely. 2% health. Yeah. So, oh, an unidentified ring. Ooh. Not even from a chest, so we still have all the chest loot to go. And so this one, unidentified ring, is almost certainly better than Velmi's ring, regardless of what kind of enchantment is on it. It's all The base ring is better, and the enchantment might be something good, and it might be cursed, of course. It wasn't cursed. All right, putting on random magical items that you find in dungeons. Uh, bad tip 101. It's actually fine. Usually, uh, cursed items will not kill you. While they give you certain benefits, or uh, like not benefits, but, but penalties, they never. I've never found a curse that would outright kill me. Uh, there, there's the the one that that um increases your hunger and thirst while you're walking uh, on top of your normal hunger, hunger and thirst. That can potentially kill you because you might run out of food faster than you expected. And so all of a sudden you're out of food where you thought you had plenty of time. And that might be a death sentence for some. I haven't tried it, but I, uh, that's the probably the only curse that I think could outright result in your death. 
Match our fire fortified in a bottle of oil. Very nice. We're looting this because it's a dead end. We're gonna come back this way. Come up here. Drink some water. Drink some alcohol because apparently we are in pain. So we found some alcohol and we drink it. And then we're gonna go and drunk fight our way through all of this. This is actually kind of perfect. The drunken state for spears specifically because it lowers your perception which lowers accuracy and spears are generally pretty accurate same with agility is also for accuracy so that's quite nice fumble chance is significantly higher but you also get 10 percent extra weapon damage i think it's fine all things considered uh -huh. okay I'm going to close the door. Oh, we are getting clumsy, so we are not allowed to walk. Come on, come on, Belmir. Oh, no. <laughs> I can't run away. I'm trying to run away. Oh, God. This is bad. All right. So now that we have broken line of sight to the ones that were uh, interested, but not necessarily alarmed, they won't follow in here. So we will cut off some of the... Oh, and again, misstepped. No, oh, okay, we have to fight now. If I want to have my range 2 fighting abilities. Yeah, and he's a mage? An adept, right. He's got the sacrificial blood and life leech, right. Is he going to come closer? He's probably going to activate vampiric blood. Oh, he's so dangerous, this guy. Well, but we have magic resistance, I suppose. 20% or something like that, yeah. That would have helped me a little bit here. I think I will step closer because he's gonna do this uh, vampiric blood thing that'll heal him for a bunch of damage and he might use his next turn here on it. He didn't. But I don't want him to do that. So I chose to engage, yeah. I'm gonna run away and rest up because there were a lot of enemies in there and we were somehow lucky to only draw out one of them. That could have been bad. Here comes the next one. We'll have him spot us, then close the door in his face. Make sure he comes down here for the 1v1. Then, offensive tactic. Let him come in range 2. Mobilize him. Stab him again. Now he's bleeding, but he's also just used a vampiric blood ability that'll allow him for, to heal for more than he takes in damage. In fact, he's at 49% now. Let's just look what it does to him. He heals 1%. Not that big of a deal. And we will kill him pretty quickly if we take the fight. So, always worth taking all those things into account before you decide whether or not to run or fight or flight, as they say. Uh, a single bat. <laughs> Activate offensive tactic and murder it. I wonder if it could be immobilized. I should take it, check its resistances. Because how would you immobilize a that. Like, it would fall to the floor if you somehow clip its wing, but that doesn't... Uh, the animation can't show that. So, I'm not so sure. They probably will just allow it to be immobilized, if any. If, if at all. We'll check the stats on it next time we see one. Still in pain? What are we taking all this pain from? I suppose we take more pain. Yeah, pain resistance minus 20% off of the masochism because we just love being in pain. And the thing is that masochism gives us extra 20% damage taken. Then pain, the, the first tier of pain, gives you 10% extra damage taken as well. So we are taking 30% more damage than we usually are from this masochism thing. Because the masochism is what's giving us the pain in the first place. So fun stuff. Being insane is uh, not sustainable. In case you were wondering, and we find an identification scroll. No, it's an enchantment scroll. Oh, okay. Well, I'll use it, and I'll use it on the belt. We never replace the knightly girdle, so might as well get it magical. Nature resistance. I, I don't think there's anything in the game that does nature damage. Not that I've seen anyway. 
And so the other thing is slashing resistance. 5% is quite a, a bit. So for slashing weapons, now we are better set. I'm going to use a flea ward on one of our body parts just because we have a lot of it. And it gives a bit of injury treatment. We spotted a trap. Lovely. That will actually help quite a bit here. For this floor anyway. Now a bat. Move resistance minus 50%. So it should absolutely be immobilizable. Uh, if, you, if it survives the poke, I mean. It's... Well, it's technically immobilized, <laughs> I suppose. Come up here. Now the big room and the stairs down. Now we are going to level before the boss, and so I will be continuing to explore here. We might as well try to get that level. Do we need to run for the trap for this? No. Like that lady shoots at you, but otherwise it's not that big of a deal. Before we even close, we've taken away 50% of her HP. Is she still immobilized here? Yeah, two more turns. Okay, I'm waiting for her to come forward. And the rat died again before we could immobilize it. I'm sure it is mobilizable as well. The thing is, it's targeting legs specifically that ability, right? That's what I'm what I'm wondering with the the bats, because they don't use their legs for locomotion, so it might not. Do they even like have a, a leg body part? The, the bats? I don't know, and I I wonder what they've done with that. We can't immobilize them because we kill them in one shot every time. All right, let's. Uh, unlock this chest. The first chest we find, we find yet another ring. Um, this one is also quite nice, and I think I do want to keep it at least. Let's just eat a penny bun, something. Oh, all this sinewy me, we are going to use it anyway. Okay, and we find a bearded axe, which is worth some money. Good enough. An iron ingot. Yeah, we need it. Time to open the backpack. Stuff in a smoked ham here. Shelf now. Yeah. Okay, smash this barrel. Spool of thread. Not important. So we didn't get to use this trap for anything. I think we have to explore the entire floor. Let's dive on into the next one. Why am I smashing crates and bells here? Mm, not sure. I will eat this raw sinewy meat. Because we can sustain the bad stuff it gives us for one use of it. And, well, it saves me money in the long run. Second floor, enemies discovered. Okay. So we managed to immobilize a rat. I'm not going to use the other ability on him, because when he gets closer we can hit both of them. And now we're fighting this guy. At 15% will he die? Does Nail Down do extra damage? It deals ex extra... It specifically targets legs, always, I suppose. I thought that was like a high chance to hit leg, but whatever. It, otherwise, it doesn't do more damage, but 7% extra crit is more damage in, in, on average, so... Might as well just use it. And then rest up. We found an unidentified maze, which is not usable because we have committed ourselves to spears, but might be worth picking up. Let's see drop something. Maybe just drop a splint here. Now this mace is not worth picking up. Okay. 
We know that there's a splint lying on the floor somewhere further up in the dungeon if we ever need it. Brandy found, another piece of lockpick. Still we still find lockpicks on every almost every excursion to this particular dungeon. Which I'm s this is whatever. Uh, and uh, whew, we found a mage, and he summoned a blood golem on the other side of this door. Now again, our magic resistance makes it so that I feel confident going into this fight. I'm just wondering if I should. We should definitely eat, so we don't have hunger issues, and we should probably say that's good enough. We have full health. Let's try. Um, this is fine because we want to fight the mage in melee. Yeah, so how do we do it in a good way? We can push him into the other guy. That actually works out quite well. That, that shoots down him if it gets the push. It did, nice. Then we can hit both of them. You know, I want to put down the Seized Initiative earlier in this fight. And then stab both of them. Okay. We got that combo off. He's down to 8%. Kill him. Now we have the Blood Golem, and it usually isn't that tanky. Yeah, it's always already at half health here. Now something happened again, and we are once again curious as to what just happened. Um, yeah. I attacked him with a basic melee attack, and it says here that Velmir uses Impaling Lunge, which is great. That's our skill here. Spears, stay back. 15% chance to use uh, Impaling Lunge instead of a basic attack. Except, he didn't attack. That ended the turn. <laughs> and then he attacks me. No, he, no, he lost 5 health to bleeding. Yeah, so, because it triggered my Impaling Lunge and that there might be a bug with that, it ended up costing me my turn. So yet another thing that cheats me of a turn in these combats. Alright, when you kill the Blood Golem, by the way, you gotta step away. But, huh. Game is not being too kind to me. Skipping turns. Oh, and we find another mage here. Okay. Oh, the rat, the rat doesn't know how to open the door. I was wondering. Okay, let's try again. I want to give you a, get your attention. I think we will just go at him. Because he's going to do the golem. No, I'll... Uh, if I close the door, I lose the tactic again. Okay, we'll keep it going. Let him come to us. Here we go. Hmm. Now I'm not sure that was so smart. Should have let him come into range again like we did the last time. Do we seize the initiative on him? No, just kill him. Should have seized the initiative on the golem instead. But maybe I'm regretting that. How is he dealing so much damage to me? That's insane. Wow. I still think we've got this. 28%. Oh no, you're kidding me. Oh wow, how is he not dying? 6%. Push the golem away. Oh god. I might have to pop a healing cell, not a healing cell, a uh, vivifying essence here. Yeah. Like it should die pretty quickly, and then we get away. This door is destroyed. Okay. This is rough. Yeah. I was so confident just a few minutes ago. Need another flea ward here. Hmm. Oh, we are in such strong pain that we're getting clumsy again. Clumsy is my most hated trait in the game. It's for flavor it's fine, but having it sucks. Ah, because you go, you lose control over your movement, which is so important. All right. So for pain, we could probably fly a Garrick, maybe. 
Yeah, we don't have any intoxication going. I'll just use the fire, Garrick. It gets the job done. Okay, I'm gonna do this room while we are regenerating. Hmm, not done regenerating. We should... I bought extra healing cells. Right. I forgot about that. So let's just use one more. And one more, because apparently we are close to death in, in close to death scenarios, and that's not ideal. We might also run into the boss right before we level here, which I really don't wanna. I don't think this is the boss room because there's a, something behind, but that's actually not a, necessarily an indicator. Yeah, this could very well be a boss room, and I don't wanna find the boss right now. Are we still? are in pain, we cannot advance while we are still in pain. So what are we doing? 34. I am gonna drink the Manchire Fortified then. That gives us more intoxication, which isn't that big of a deal. It will go away pretty quickly. I will wait for the drunkenness to uh, go away here. Yeah, no, neither intoxication or pain at this point. Okay, we got intoxication again. Let's, it should go away pretty quickly here. Yeah, there you go. Open the door. It is not the boss chamber. Good. Now we let him come closer. I'm not sure this is ideal. Still not leveling. We need 12 XP. No, 112. Which means, I mean, this this has a higher chance of being the boss chamber because it's deeper in the dungeon. So I'm gonna go or uh, deeper on the floor. So I'll go up here to the start of the floor and open a new door. Get him. 40 XP from that guy. Two more of them and then we have the level. Cold chunk. Nah. No thank you. Alright, we are ready. Open the door. Alright, nothing found here. Yeah, so like 80 XP. You can get that shortly. Yeah, <laughs> that'll do it. Um, I don't want to use the abilities on the bat. Shouldn't be necessary. Seize the initiative. Then hit both of them. He's still alive. Yeah, they have so much healing ongoing, these guys. That's why they continue to live through everything that I throw at them. I think he died to damage reflection here, by the way. Which is always fun to see. But another Manchai fortified and a crowbar. Okay. We need 2 XP to level up now. And if, with my luck, this is the boss chamber. No. Okay, we get the level. Good stuff. Get the offensive tactic up. Let him come to us. And there you go. That'll be level number five. And we have get Megalomania again, which is ca actually, that's kind of perfect. Because going into the boss fight with Masochism is bad. Be way better with Megalomania, which cost me the sum of the experience gained. But compared to staying alive, I think this is a fine trade-off. I will get one more point of vitality and then strength again. And we are running out of points to put or places to spend our... Billy points. We don't have pyromancy or early geomancy. Do we really won't do anything for us? Combat mastery? No. And athletics? We could get some athletics. I might as well get the spear thing, I think. Besides hits. And I do want to explore the whole tree anyway. Well. 
And this is not that good for the troll. Mm. This is not that good for the troll either. So these two are in fact not that good for the troll at all. And then the precise hits here, since we probably can't immobilize the troll that easily, this would allow me to maybe do it. But I'm actually not going to spend my point. I need to find some treatises. All right, now we do want to find the boss. Ah, but there's another floor. Okay, let's just dive down to the floor. Next. Oh, and I need to sneeze. Oh, we find a great sword, an unidentified great sword here. It's worth a lot of money. The identification scroll will be spent for sure. We'll just use it on the potion, because the potion might be a bad one, and then we'll just drop it to clear some space, inventory space here. Potion of pain killing is pretty damn good. Okay, and the great sword. I want it, but we do not have the space for it at the moment. I don't want to do the item management right now. We know that the sword is here, and we can pick it up on the way out. Yeah, maybe for now. Oh, uh, this is a dangerous, dangerous room for sure. So much that I'm gonna be running away for a bit here. To at least, well, we can still bottleneck them at the door here, but I'm thinking that I want to be able to escape to the stairs maybe here. This is a high tier opponent, the Chosen, and so is the mage with his blood golem by the way. Yeah. Now how much move assist do you have? Ten percent. We can try to impale him here, but I want him to come up here where I can then Push him into the wall and stun him. I think that's better if it works. Uh oh. It did not work. Seize the initiative. Get him stabbed. And all the healing. How's he doing? 42%. Are we getting him killed? 30%? Mm. Ow. There yeah, he got a good hit on me. But he's down to 2%. So he should die here. Good. Next in line is the Blood Golem. Which takes three hits. Four? And I hope it damages him. It did. Oh, nice. I didn't think it would. Okay. Do I need to run or fight? He's not going to do another Blood Golem. And he's out of the Vampiric Rune. And we do have Magic Resist, if that's relevant. He could kill me here. Let him come closer. Try to immobilize him here. It worked. Oh, and we don't have 63 health, remember? Because we are megalomaniac. So I will run away. Now what? This is gonna draw him with us. I forgot. Okay. Let's apply a healing self. Use a flea ward. And probably stack that up to two flea wards. So we heal. That's gonna give us a lot of health replenishment. Which allows me to regenerate some health right quick here. Yeah, I can't rest because enemy is on your buy. Okay. We are on pain also. We could get rid of that. By drinking here. Let me get one more tick of healing at least. There, and then step like this. Push him into the wall. Seize the initiative. Okay. Yeah. We got him. No worries. And so, we are hungry. I wouldn't say that was a clean fight, but we came out on top. Oh, 
another chest. There's some loot. Find a rag, sure. This looks like the boss chamber. Let me rest up. And consider whether or not we need to do anything specific here. Hmm. Again, I have that nagging feeling that I'm forgetting something. It's not the boss chamber. Okay. Come at me. Oh, I positioned myself poorly here. Hmm. Yeah. Oh, no. I'll do it like this. Hit both of them. Now let him come closer. Yeah, good. And we got him. Close the door, rest up. Cautious approach. Loot a bit. Nails. Hmm. Oh, we got hit in the head for 2% is not that bad. No, I don't... I'm not going to spend any healing cells on this right now. Open the door. Again, could be the boss. And it is. All right. Then I want to pop a flea ward if we have one. Yeah, on our last damaged body part. But even better, it also gives us health replenishment and healing efficiency, lead resistance during this fight, which might make a difference. There you go. That's all the preparation we get to do. He's in range. Two. I try to immobilize him here. I think he's he's probably got good resistances for that. No, not a single one. Nice. So then I have time to put up my offensive tactic as well and stab him one more time. Then he comes in, he sees the initiative. And after that whole introduction, he's down to 38%. Okay. And we got him. Nice. So we still are a bit ahead of the curve here, I think. Oh, the Pagan Amulet is probably the quest item here. But it's such a good one. Uh, is it though? It's good for energy and energy restoration, but that's not our problem. So no, it's not good for us. Okay. We find a ranged weapon treatise 1, which is not one of the treatises that we need. And the pyromantic treatise 4? Are you freaking kidding me? I have never had pyro 4. It's worth 5,000 coins here. Okay. Of course, it doesn't sell for 5,000, but it probably sells for quite a bit of money. And now, now we have unlocked Pyromancy 4. Fun stuff. Never, never actually read those abilities. I don't know what they do. It has never been relevant for me. So, yeah. Oh, 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 I misclicked. That time it was my fault. Uh oh. Now we got it. Hmm. Oh, uh, we find the Ether Inhaler, which is my preferred pain, anti-pain tool, or whatever you want to call it. So, what do we drop to make room, though? We find we found another potion. I didn't even catch that. Nice. Just eat this thing and keep the ring. Rest up. We are back on Masochism, by the way. Which is worth keeping an eye on, because it makes it everything a little bit harder. Uh, this Shiv is worth nothing, even though it's magical. Um, yeah. We can defeat those guys. <laughs> My first reaction upon seeing a room like that is always to close the door and... If you can't see them, then they can't hurt you, right? We are out of healing cells. In inventory here. I have some in the backpack. But I don't think I should open the backpack right now. Oh, 
when they come in the wrong order or in the right order for them, because when he dies, he's gonna buff the other lady and she's ranged support. So this is per perfect for them. <clears throat> Not so much for me. I'm gonna activate the offensive tactic though. Now I can't do abilities. This is how we die. Oh, that time it worked. Look at that. He used Impaling Lunge and attacked both of them. Perfect. So we got a free use of that ability and it doesn't cost any en energy or anything. Lovely. Alright, and we can then we'll push this guy back into the other guy, dealing damage to both and stunning the one in front. And then we do it my own Impaling Lunge. Now he's buffed by this Blood Vow, which is bad for me. He's immobilized and bleeding. And in fact, this Blood Vow is going to go away. Of course, he's recharging this Baleful Scream. So we won't let it go for seven turns. But there's no reason for me to engage right now, at this second. Let him bleed a little bit, then let him come in. Seize the initiative. And murder. Good. Yeah, we handled that pretty well. Could have been way worse. There's a potato. I don't need all these bandages. Oh, we have Frenzy now, which is the better state. That's my favorite insanity. It comes with 30% extra damage taken, but also uh, with a lot of lovely bonuses. More so than the masochism anyway. A frenzied spearman. Alright. There's nothing to do here. We gotta keep an eye on the great sword. I'm not sure. Oh. There's an enemy. No, okay, there's a closed door behind us. That's why we can't. Path all the way. I'm not sure the great sword is worth bringing back because it's so big. Well, I can probably find some things to drop. Oh, money. Uh, let's drink. We're back on masochism. Too bad. Frenzy never seems to stick around for long when you get it. Another tough room here. Oh, even more so, but there was a trap in here that helped us. Lovely. And so now I want to engage so that they stay on the trap, but I don't think I can orchestrate that from here now. But he's basically already dead, this guy. And he's staying there casting spells. Okay, so he's dead. That's nice. And then the rest of them I wanna hmm yeah stab him now then move away come up here so that when we push people we push them into this wall segment I think this guy's about to die though here we had another case of he, uh, my guy trying to use impaling lunge and then doing nothing so so far, in 66% of the cases, it costs me a turn instead of giving me a free uh, action, uh, like uh, skill use. So, that's bad. He's back to 42%. He heals right fast. I'm going to use the nail down on him to push him into the wall then. And that should kill him like that. And then we seize the initiative on the golem. Use the impaling lunge. That pushed him back? Why did he get stunned from that? Not sure. And I'm gonna run away from the mage and recover. So we are in a bad spot. There's also this conjurer stuff here that we need to check the price on before we leave the dungeon. I don't think it's worth that much as far as I recall, but it might be worth it. Now, what am I doing here? We need to eat some food. We need to deal with the pain somehow. So let's drink the alcohol. Probably even apply a herbal extract here. 
just to get it done. Got smash some crates and barrels while we're drunk. Oh. We apply healing self. I should definitely get the healing cells out of the backpack at least. So they are readily available. More food required. From the smoked ham. We have intoxication, but it's not that bad. Let's go kill that mage. He's gotta be one of the, if not the final enemy. Okay, let him come in, seize the initiative, murder. Another unidentified potion, nice. Is that three potions in one run? Yeah, in one dungeon, nice. And it was the final room. Rabbit pelt. Oh, I almost stepped in the trap. Now, don't step on the trap on the way out, and we're good to go. The unidentified greatsword. We are running back to town after this year. We couldn't. We could go to the other dungeon directly, but no, 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 no. We are gonna go and sell our loot and stuff. So let's make room for a greatsword. We can drop a bandage. It's not worth that much, and eat the potato here. Here, smash these crates. Spirit. And an onion, sure. Eat it. Smoked ham. Conjurer staff. Sells for 230. No, no, no. Not at all worth it. And I know it's not what it sells for, but I'm gauging the prices based on memory most of the time. So, just making sure that we've gotten everything on the way out here. Over here. Good. Let's see if we can run to the town and squeeze the next dungeon into this episode here. That would be lovely. There's some crates and barrels to smash here on the way. They're done, Velmir. Don't step on the trap. I'm skipping one crate. Take this barrel though, and out we are. And over here, we'll probably grab this golden tool if I can find anything to drop. Ha, huh, no. You know what? We'll come back to this dungeon eventually and it will still be there, that golden tooth. So it's fine. Let's get to the town. Try not to die on the way back. On the way back. We gotta check the town merchant, Bert, and see if he's got some treatises for sale. We are looking for combat mastery and we're looking for spears. Is that the only two trees we are using? It might be. Yeah. Hmm. I'm tempted to go for Pyromancy 1. Uh, we won't be full Pyromancy in this playthrough, which is unfortunate, unfortunate considering that we found Pyromancy for it. It's just not viable at this point. I would have to be like, or go to like level 15 and then only go Pyromancy from here on out to, to get that far down the tree anyway. And that's not gonna happen. So, a Pyro 1, the thing about it, I'm thinking about it because it's just nice to have Fire Barrage as a, a ranged attack to use every once in a while, but against the Troll with Ana, where I also had Fire Barrage, I never used it to get in the Troll fight even once, so it felt like kind of a waste in the end, and I'm not so sure. It does come with a an upside here. No, this one gives pyromantic power as a passive, not energy replenishment as I thought. Never mind then. The town is closed. Okay. K 
Can we live without town management? We cannot. Because I need to buy medical supplies and repair. So we will go and sleep until morning here. I won't do all the town management here because I, I want to... Can we squeeze? Let me check the time real quick. Hold on. Oh no, it's been 50 minutes already, really? Oh. We'll do the town management then, and then consider the episode. I thought we were doing or making good time here, but apparently not. Alright. I get caught up in Stone Shard. Time flies. So, let's sell the brandy to you. And go and do the rest. some water, eat some food. Um, I guess we won't be identifying the great sword or the stack. It's just a for the sake of curiosity, I suppose we will. Well, not the dagger, but the sword. Uh, you know what? No, they sell not enough identification scrolls here in town. So I would have to save the great sword and then identify it at a later time, or... Uh, there's two identification scrolls here, so it does add up to exactly three, which is what we need. One for the ring. A, an acid proof silver topaz ring with caustic resistance. Ah, eh, not good. Control resistance is nice. Pain resistance is nice. Health and restoration and efficiency compared to what we get here. Cooldown duration. Pain resistance is actually really important for us, so I'm gonna keep that ring. Which I suppose my, my Velmius ring also gave me pain resistance. Identify the potion. Potion of curiosity. That's a potion we can actually use earlier on. That's nice. So the gemstones, go and turn in the quest item. Good stuff. Then, oh, let's check his treatises, I forgot. You have Swords 1, Range 2. Dual build 2, Athletics 1, Combat Master 2. Oh, there you are. Lovely. Read that. Sell it back to him. Are you already done with that book? Sure, I'm a fast reader. Alright. Combat Mastery 2 gives us stance trading, which does nothing. <laughs> and so we can get Armor Crusher, which I had earlier talked about how this is actually kind of decent against the troll because he does have armor and killing that armor quickly makes it easier to take down the troll kind of okay and then when it he reaches zero durability you have five turns with some extra damage we will get stance training eventually though and so i might as well get it right now is my thinking then you get passive bonus two percent energy restoration which is going to use this but I'm not sure I would get the Armor Crusher if I had better options. Stands training though, I'm pretty sure we will get. Uh, let's go and buy the final identification scroll down here. And then if he has two, I will identify the Great Sword, but I think he only has one. Yeah. Get splints. More healing cells, and uh, we do need that splint, so hold on like that. Uh, should I buy... I'll buy a vivifying essence. Yeah. Now for armor, chest piece armor, do you have anything worth looking at? The Gambeson? It would be quite nice. Same with the splint van braces would also be a good upgrade. Hmm. No. 
but we almost died, so more armor is needed. Two more protection, though? How big of a deal is that? Uh, it also comes with slashing, piercing, and rending resistance. Hmm. I can't make up my mind. Do we want to get the gambus on? Should buy one of these things anyway. Hmm. No, no, I can't, I can't do it, guys. I can't do it. I'm too stingy with my money. We can buy a, a metal uh, armor later down the line, right? And I do need to save money for treatises and stuff like that. So yeah, let's identify the last potion here. Potion of rage, nice. Curiosity, we will keep in our inventory. The other one goes in the tavern chest. Still have more stuff for the merchant that I missed. Have we gotten everything? Yes, and I believe... Oh, I don't think I repaired by the smith. No. Spears. Mm, nah, we're not ready to replace our cursed spear yet. And so I think we are approaching the end of the episode here. Um... That nagging feeling that I'm forgetting something it has never gone away. Oh, this is something that I have been forgetting. Rickard. Uh, I have talked with you before, but I've been told that you... ...have a new quest. If Osbrook is so important, why don't the magistrate send one to... to, to Hold on, you boar. Are you... what are you getting? Are you implying I'm not fit for the job? Is that so? I bow to your promise then. I thought you had a quest. No, I guess not. Okay, no new quest here. Potion of Rage goes in the chest. Curiosity will keep with us. Didn't we find three potions? Oh, and we haven't sold the Pyromantic Treatise. Oops. Alright. We'll store the Iron Inker. We need five of them for a mini quest. We need to... Do, 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 do. I'll store Wilma's Ring just for a keepsake. This ring will be stored for later. Make this a little bit more neat. Good, and I think I'll stuff in a lockpick stack because we have three of them now. And I have too much pain resistance or pain uh, medication on us, and I don't need three uses of the vivifying essence. Okay, and we don't need two purses here. Good enough. And. I'll go and sell that Pyromantic Treatise right now, before we forget. I also am pretty curious to see how much a Tier 4 ma Magical Treatise sells for. So... 500. Alright. That is pretty good. Nothing else here to note right now. I was thinking about that ranged 2 Treatise, but... Hmm. No. Anyway, I hope you guys are enjoying Vilnius playthrough. Again, the uh, the release schedule might change in the coming week. I'm not really sure about how to approach it yet. I'll figure it out. I hope everyone's enjoying the series. See you next time, guys, and bye.